Welcome to Marking the End Times. I'm Mark Hitchcock. And on this week's program, I want to delve deeper into this ongoing building Middle East crisis and some of the powerful political and prophetic implications that are setting the stage for end-time events prophesied in the Bible. Now, before we get to that, let me just preview the subscriber-only section that we'll get to in a few minutes. And what I'm going to do today is continue our study of the book of Revelation. We're just going through kind of just systematically doing an exposition of the book of Revelation. And today we're going to look at uh, the third of the seven letters of Jesus to these seven churches that are recorded in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. It's, it's Jesus' message to the church at Pergamum. And this uh, church has a very relevant message for our lives and our churches today um, in the 21st century because the church at Pergamum was a compromising church. And uh, we can easily fall into that in our culture today. We live in a compromising culture. And uh, God wants us to stand firm uh, for Christ in a culture of compromise. So I want us to look at that that letter uh, to that church at Pergamum today. There's some very major recent developments in the inevitable Israeli attack on Iran. There there are developments with Israel's enemies. Uh, There's developments in the narrowing down of the timing for this attack. Uh, There are also developments in the U.S.-Israeli relationship that are very important today. And so, first of all, what I want to talk about is, is Iran is rallying its proxies to encircle Israel in preparation for the upcoming war. Uh, Fox News has a headline that says, Iran terror proxies amass on Israel's borders in a ring of fire. So over the last many, many years, Iran has carefully, consistently assembled a ring of fire uh, that encircles Israel. All these various proxies, again, we mentioned these before, Jeff Hamas down in the area of Gaza, You have Hezbollah up in Lebanon and in Syria. And then you have primarily the Houthis down way south of Israel, down at the bottom at the tip of the Arabian Peninsula. And then uh, to the the east, you have all these Iraqi um, uh, militia groups that are backed by by Iran. Now, now right now, these, these surrogates are tightening the noose in anticipation of Israel's imminent attack against Iran. Now, while these groups are ready to attack, they're awaiting orders from Iran. And this Fox News article says this, Pro-Iranian militias in Iraq number around 60 to 70,000 individuals, making them a formidable force. So this is just these Iraqi uh, militia groups that are backed by Iran in, in, in Iraq. The article says there are reports that the Houthis, have already sent a forward unit to southern Syria consisting of experts in operating missiles and rockets to assist in training the militias in southern Syria to operate these systems. The the Houthis are recruiting many people and training various militias which could lead to their presence in Iraq or southern Syria from which they might attack Israel and American forces in the region, either physically or through missiles." So this is a major development as this ring of fire is kind of kind of collapsing upon the nation of Israel and tightening the noose around Israel's neck. And so this is another major development uh, that, that that we see happening over there as this inevitable Israeli response and retaliation against Iran is going to take place. Now, another major development concerns U.S. relationship and U.S. help for Israel against Iran. A CNN has a headline that says U.S. suggests military aid to Israel is at risk in a letter demanding more aid for Gaza. Now, in this CNN article, it says this. The Biden administration sent a letter to the Israeli government demanding it act to improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza within the next 30 days or risk violating U.S. laws governing foreign military assistance, suggesting U.S. military aid could be in jeopardy. The Sunday letter, jointly written by U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, is addressed to Israeli Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant and Minister of Strategic Affairs Ron Dermer. It marks a significant new step by the U.S. to try to compel Israel to facilitate the delivery of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Now, the United States has said repeatedly that this is not a threat. But it's difficult for me to view this in any other way. They're saying, if you don't do this, then there's a danger that uh, this aid is going to be diminished or completely cut off. 
Now, I can't think of a worse time for the U.S. to be playing games with Israel's security. I mean, Israel is facing an existential threat from Iran and its proxies. And the U.S. should be backing Israel right now more strongly than ever as it fights the world's greatest sponsor of terror. Uh, We need to uh, fight against Iran, which, again, is the the, uh, sponsor of global terror. I mean, the number one sponsor of all of this. We need to support Israel in taking out Iran's nuclear program. Both the United States and Israel have said clearly, several administrations, that we will not let Iran get nuclear weapons. Well, they're right on the threshold. And Israel now has the the ability and the opportunity to go and, if not take it out, at least uh, greatly uh, cripple this Iranian uh, nuclear program. A nuclear Iran would be the biggest game changer the region has ever seen, maybe the world has ever seen, and it has to be stopped. So this is critical for our nation. You know, our support for Israel as a country may be the main thing right now that's staying God's hand of judgment against our nation. With all the things that we're doing in our country that are against God and against his word and his ways, the one main thing that may be staying God's hand of judgment against us is our a support of Israel. So we need to be careful, uh, very careful as a nation. Now, at the same time the U.S. is threatening Israel to, to cut off this, this military support, the U.S. is sending an advanced missile defense system to Israel, along with about 100 American troops to operate it. I mean, it's the first deployment of U.S. forces to Israel since the Hamas-led attack there uh, last October on October 7th. So it's the first time U.S. troops have been sent there. Now, this missile defense system is called THAAD, T-H-A-A-D, which stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System. It's another layer or level of protection for Israel against these uh, missile and, and rocket attacks. But of course, this could easily pull U.S. troops further into this conflict with all kinds uh, of ramifications. Now, in a related story about the U.S. and Israel, AP has a headline that says, Israel assures U.S. it won't strike Iranian nuclear or oil sites, U.S. officials say. Now, if that's true, that report, that's a terrible leak for Israel's military operation. I mean, it could allow Iran to shift defensive efforts away from those assets. I mean, no one wants to tip their hand or telegraph their strategy about an upcoming military invasion. Uh, So this is no time for us to tie um, Israel's hands behind its back. All all options need to be on the table. Now, of course, this report could be just a ruse or a decoy, decoy to get Iran to let down its guard near its oil facilities or nuclear sites. Uh, well, that wouldn't surprise me if this could be being put out there and it's just kind of a decoy uh, to help Iran, you know, think, well, OK, these these places are safe. We can kind of move our defenses somewhere else. I mean, time will tell. But the article goes on to say that the assurances that Israel gave the U.S. are not ironclad and could change based on any circumstances that change on the ground. So really, these assurances that Iran, is, that, that Israel has given to the U.S., you know, we won't hit the oil infrastructure or the nuclear sites, is really not binding. Um, ultimately, Prime Minister Netanyahu said this week that Israel will determine what it does, not the United States. Um, the, the Jerusalem Post says Israel has been planning for an attack on Iran for 20 years. So Israel is ready. And I think that's why it's taking its time right now. They're ready. They have some very advanced weapons that they can employ. And so I think when they do this, it's going to be an incredibly strategic uh, attack. Now, another connection between Israel and the U.S. is that an Israeli attack on Iran could have a massive impact on U.S. elections. It could be a stunning October surprise that tilts the election toward former President Trump. Um, If the Middle East descends into chaos and the U.S. is drawn more deeply into this conflict and oil prices begin to rise, this could be an, an October surprise unlike one we've ever seen before. Now, the U.S. has allegedly encouraged Israel not to hit Iran before the elections on November 5th. So the current administration does not want Israel to do anything before the elections because they realize uh, some of the fallout from this. Uh, The U.S. administration is particularly concerned about an Israeli response that will cause prices to rise in the global energy market on the eve of uh, the U.S. presidential elections. Obviously, that would work against uh, the, the incumbents. 
But this sends a, a dangerous message or signal, I think, to Iran that the U.S. is holding Israel back for political reasons. Uh, President or Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, just said a couple of days ago that Israel will strike Iranian military targets before the November 5th election. So we now have a small window of time when we know this retaliation will occur. It's going to be from the time I'm videoing here today. It's going to be within uh, the next uh, 20 days. So this could obviously have a massive impact on uh, U.S. elections. From Haaretz, which is a Jewish publication, says Netanyahu's looming Iran strike could make the U.S. election uh, go ballistic. Uh, the, the article says the potential spillover and is, uh, of an Israeli strike on Iran, the embroilment of U.S. troops, the potential shock on oil prices caused by a subsequent Iranian retaliation could have a direct impact on voters in a way that Israel has never previously uh, moved the needle. So this Iran-Israel war could have far-reaching political implications for the upcoming U.S. elections. And if President Trump is elected, that could strengthen uh, U.S. support for Israel going forward. So I have to wait and see what happens and what effect, if any, this has upon our elections and our nation. But we know for sure that the Iran-Israel war has profound prophetic implications for the Gog-Magog invasion of Israel predicted in Ezekiel 38. The current war between Israel and Iran, it's a preview. I mean, this is a warm-up. This is a dress rehearsal for that coming end-time war. It's stoking the flames for what is coming. We know that When this war, this end time war eventually takes place, Iran will be joined by Turkey and Russia and some other uh, nations in that part of the world. And uh, we see the build up to that happening right now, literally before our eyes. But, But before that invasion is unleashed, I believe the rapture of the church must take place first. I believe the rapture is the next event on God's prophetic calendar. So the nearness of this Gog-Magog war means that the rapture is even that much closer. And my prayer is that God will fill our our hearts with hope as we await his coming again. Maranatha, even so, I come, Lord Jesus. We're going to go now to the subscriber-only section, as we mentioned earlier, and continue our uh, study of the book of Revelation, looking at that, that, that third letter of Jesus to those seven churches, I'm there in, in Revelation uh, chapter 2. And so uh, thank you so much if you're a subscriber. Um, if you're not a subscriber, uh, you can go to endtimes.com and, and sign up there and become a subscriber. And you'll just have access to all kinds of great information that I think will really, really edify you and, and encourage you in, in these times in which we live. So let's go now to this subscriber-only section and get back into our study of the book of Revelation. <laughs> 